Now we're ready to examine the abdomen. The four steps of the examination begin, of course, with inspection, but then we move right to auscultation, and this is different than in any other organ system. And the reason why we auscultate right after inspection is that any time we would percuss or palpate uh, the abdomen, that can stimulate the, the bowel and falsely increase the uh, bowel sounds. So we always first inspect, and then we move to auscultation right away. And again, the exam is always done on skin uh, and not over an article of clothing or gown. Uh, always warn the patient before you touch their abdomen. Many people are jitterish or ticklish. Uh, so always let the patient know before you actually do maneuver what you are uh, going to do and examine from the right side, of course. The first thing we're going to do is just inspect the abdomen. We're going to look at the abdominal skin, see if there's any skin lesions. We're going to look for scars. We're going to look for striae, which might be pink or purple in colored and be indicative of Cushing syndrome. We'll look for dilated veins on the abdominal wall, which could be a sign of liver cirrhosis. We're also going to look for skin rashes. Uh, oftentimes people will have a rash where their clothing rubs against their skin, so against the, the belt line or else in the inguinal area you might notice a, a rash. And looking at the umbilicus you're going to be looking to see if there's any sign of herniation. And also look for signs of pulsation on the skin. After you've done a general inspection then you're going to note the contour of the abdomen. And to do that you might need to actually uh, look down uh, a little bit tangentially at the abdomen uh, instead of standing straight up. Basically what you're looking for is this contour here. Uh, in FAD, the contour is basically flat. Uh, the, ca the contour can also be concave down or what we call scaphoid in which it's sort of uh, depressed or hollowed out. Uh, conversely, it could also be rounded or protuberant or distended where the actual abdomen is uh, shaped is uh, protuberant. Uh, that could be from uh, because the patient is overweight, from gas, from pregnancy, from ascites, from a tumor. Uh, a protuberant or distended abdomen isn't a specific diagnosis. It's, again, just something you notice in part of your inspection. The next part of the examination is auscultation. So with that, I'm going to place my stethoscope on uh, your skin and listen. And we do ask that you listen in all four quadrants. You listen with the diaphragm uh, of your stethoscope and not with the... Um, the bell, and gently place the, the diaphragm on the patient's abdomen. Let just the weight of the stethoscope hold it. You don't need to push down hard on the abdomen. Now I'm moving to the right lower quadrant. And the left lower quadrant. in the left upper quadrant. You need to listen until you hear bowel sounds. If you don't hear bowel sounds in a quadrant, you need to listen for a full two minutes before you can say that uh, the bowel sounds are absent in any given quadrant. But normally, bowel sounds uh, are present at a rate of 3 to 34 uh, a minute, so they're usually very easily heard. Also, while you're listening in the upper quadrants, you might notice uh, bruise. Uh, this could be a sound uh, of blockage in either the aorta or the renal arteries. But for a bruise to be significant, it should have both a systolic as well as a diastolic component.